Larry Wills, former cameraman turned influencer, just influenced his nose into the mirror. So he's posing in front of the mirror and being filmed. He then passes out and straight face plants into the mirror. How do I know all of this? Because he didn't forget to upload it to TikTok because never skip content day and all that. The smudge tells a story. Everyone wants to be a bodybuilder. Nobody wants to kiss the mirror on the way to the emergency room. And so if you want to see the full clip, it's on this page. That page being personal trainer, YouTube and huge supplements, the holy trinity of influence. So maybe because he's been blasting gear for the last year to increase his social misleadious status and or maybe because he's cutting and extremely lean, he may have passed out from the protocols that he's been on. A poignant reminder that health and fitness can also be about health and fitness or just being a smooth operator. Me just setting up to squat. Man interrupts my set, can I work in with you? So her very measured and decent response was Um, there are other squat racks open. Mine would have been Man interrupts my set, can I work in with you? Oh sorry, I've already lit the bar. Trust me, he works every time. Proceeds to tell me how he doesn't like using other squat racks. No, when someone is literally about to squat, don't interrupt them. We've seen a lot of nonsensical, creative writing, fake shaming type videos recently, but this one is legitimate. She then proceeds to show all the free squat racks that were available. Fair point, more racks than a sizzler. That gym is like a unicorn. Where is that? And so I would place that scenario into the annoying category, no more or less than that really, kind of like this channel. My new about section, slightly annoying, nothing more or less. But it's also worth remembering that most people are decent and most gym interactions will be friendly. You're doing a really good job with the roller wheel. That's not easy to do. <laughs> Thank you. Keep it up. <laughs> Thank you, have a nice day. He's a roller wheel fan over here. He's even got his own. <laughs> it's hard. I haven't done them in a while. Got mine from the little middle section. Two pounds well spent. Sorry, I've already licked it. But when we see some of these gym confrontation clips, I think what would avoid a lot of gym issues is that we need to be flexible. It's great to have a training plan. It's great to clearly plan your sessions. But if the machine is taken or you can't use the dumbbells you want to use, for example, whatever it may be, being creative and finding alternative ways of overloading may be needed. And that can actually be a rewarding exercise in itself. This almost on the spot critical thinking of how you can adapt to that specific gym in that circumstance circumstance and still overload and stimulate the muscles or failing that just make sure no one comes near you at all <coughs> sorry not ready yet let's hype it and in this week's sesame street c is for cheap food do you want fries with that c is for content jake paul punches youtuber so hard he poos his pants after losing bet <laughs> And my very favorite, not at all, cheat reps. The try to do absolutely no back rows on the row machine challenge. A perfect example of even more ego than the amount of plates he's trying to stack onto that machine. Followed what I can only name as hero curls. I love the fact he has a loaded bar in front of him whilst bicep curling, just for aesthetics. Ambiance, I think, is the technical term. Finished with a little bit of as if the Smith machine needs any more of a stigma. That was as creative as Manchester City's accountants. So there is some precedence to cheat reps. Some fitness authors, for example, will recommend that at the end of your working set, you may throw in a few cheat reps to create further stimulus, further overload. And so of course, it's not gonna be as much load on the target muscle, but it's kind of seen as a little bit of extra work after you've performed your regular working set, but not as a main training principle. Of course, good exercise execution is the smart approach, as is this. Capturing images of another person without their permission by use of cellular phones, mobile devices, or other equipment with video capabilities is strictly prohibited in this facility. Well done to LA Fitness. Maybe the law enforcement bit's going a bit too far, but don't worry, because that sign's been up for ages and everyone ignores it. Yo, man, move this shit out of here, man. It's in the way. Hey, don't touch my shit, bro. Don't put it there. Trying to get weights. Is this your gym? No, we're going to try to train. No, don't touch my shit. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just love how in the middle of the guys having the awkward move your camera we want to exercise argument the camera then flips and records this dude casually mopping his brow calm as a cucumber mate hashtag Quaker pregrain
Anyway, to the main act. We all know that the side effects of PED use are lying to your fans and selling BCAAs, but here's an interesting debate. Roids ruined his physique. For credit brought to my attention by this channel, I'm not familiar with this channel. It seems like a bodybuilding news and goings on type channel, specifically focused on men's physique. I found someone who puts the microphone closer to their mouth than me. How dare you, sir? Patent. Just joking. He comes across as a well-spoken guy. Roided out muscle freak. I'm just messing. He seems a decent guy from this video. So he uploaded a video of bodybuilder Ahmed Shokri who Kim Kardashian the internet. Party game, how many husbands has Kim Kardashian had? Um, so why did Ahmed break the internet? Well, let's rewind a few years. Teenage MMA fighter and bodybuilder Ahmed Shokri has developed an amazing natural physique at 5'7", 165 pounds and 19 years old. He's training for Muscle Mania Dubai in October, his first competition. So that was a few years ago when he was 18, 19 years old. Fast forward and here he is at 22. Someone's been on the broccoli and chicken. So he's clearly achieved hypertrophy 2.0, what you would term elite level fitness competitor gains. And then we're going to talk about someone who just recently broke the internet. Dude, the amount of backlash that Ahmed Shakri is getting right now is crazy. 99.9999% of these comments on this reel that I put up the other day are so negative, it's crazy. So the debate is not so much about his results, which are of course elite as a fitness competitor, but more about the side effects. This video that I shared onto Instagram has like three, 400,000 views, over 400 comments, maybe more by now. And people do not like this. There's very, very few people that can kind of think outside of the box and be like, you know what? He's going to do whatever he wants to do. Um, it's his body. It's his health. I can't tell him what to do. Yes, and this is a sport. And if you do want to compete in it at that level, you have to juice. Kind of like the CrossFit Games who like a bent detective are trying to cover their tracks. Several athletes tested negative for banned substances in a recent out of competition how to cheat test. And with younger and younger people getting into the sport of bodybuilding, I suppose that younger and younger people are going to turn to juice to compete in it. It's his decision. It's his right. Absolutely. I get that point of view. I just find it a shame though, when you had someone who was a young athlete, an MMA fighter, incredible athleticism and fitness physicality naturally. Here are some of the comments. Ruining your health for your vanity. Say what you really mean. I mean, don't all, all bodybuilders do that? Don't, doesn't every single bodybuilder that takes these hardcore steroids, don't they ruin their health to become better bodybuilders, to become more famous, to have more attention, to get more awards, more accolades. But here's the thing. The sport is literally about judging aesthetics. Social media is literally about judging everything. People are going to have their opinions and Ahmed is going to have to accept that. And I'm sure pro bodybuilders probably don't care what people think except the judges. Joel Vaconde says hard work that it's a cult to drugs all we can see is the work of the drugs on his body the guy has a point but we have seen sadly several pro bodybuilders pass away recently as this article documents and what stands out with those statistics is the young age of the people in their 40s in many cases this is a very emotive and important debate so let me know your thoughts on that and of course you can go and watch the original video for full context jamie goldie a 21 year old bouncer model and body coach is well aware of these health risks you see common sense but take steroids anyway. You see common sense. He estimates that around half of the people at his gym use PDs, but says the only reason he takes them is because he enters bodybuilding competitions where he believes the vast majority of competitors have used some sort of PD. Would you sit a mass test if everyone had the answers but you? I'd sit next to Douglas and copy him. He could do his eight times table when we were seven. He says, I get messages from 16, 17, 18 year old guys asking where they can get roids. I tell them, just don't do it. You're too young. All you need to do is concentrate on eating enough food, training properly, going to the gym and sleeping enough, unless you're 21 and you want to be a fitness competitor. And these 16, 17, and 18 year olds look up to you and follow you on social media and want the lifestyle that you're projecting, which may not actually even exist in reality, this is an important debate. And so here is some real inspiration, an eight year natural transformation. Paul Tumo doesn't count. I'm just joking. A lot of good in that type of video. I'll see you soon.